So why is everybody using AI for teaching and learning? Well, because it just makes sense. AI can help us summarize and plan and organize the teaching that we're doing so that we can learn more effectively and we can spend time actually teaching and learning rather than just gathering resources or building structure. Now, I'd be surprised if any of this was surprising to you, but there's a bit of a secret evolution in AI that I think you'll want to know about and take advantage of. Now, at this point, I think it's safe to say that most people have heard about tools like ChatGPT and Gemini and Copilot and a lot of the different tools that are these general purpose AI tools. And they can definitely act as useful tools, but there is a significant barrier to actually becoming effective using these tools. And that's prompt engineering. Who wants to learn a whole new way of talking to a computer just to get what you really need, which is something that you can use to teach and to learn? And the good news here is that we now have entirely new categories of AI-powered tools that help us work in ways that are familiar to us, but take advantage of the power of AI. This isn't just happening in education, it's the arrival of domain-specific AI tools. Tools that are aimed at specific users, and they're built in a way that allows us to use our existing expertise with the help of AI to do amazing things. Now, when it comes to education, there are a few new tools that are out there, and I hope to share them with you here on the channel. One tool that I'd like to share with you today demonstrates perfectly well exactly what I mean by a domain-specific tool. It's an interesting tool that's aimed specifically at teaching and learning. So comment down below after you've watched the video, what do you think of the tool? What do you think about the fact that it's aimed very directly at the education market? It's a tool that's useful because it understands education. Now, what is the tool? It's called EdCafe. EdCafe, it's a website that allows me to build teaching and learning materials like presentations, teaching resources, flashcards, assignments, and it can even help with the grading by setting up grading guides. Plus, I can use it for research, and there's a really neat feature that I can use in order to take advantage of social media. So basically, it can help support me in all of the mechanical aspects of teaching and learning so that we can focus specifically on the creative and critical thinking aspects, but have resources available to us that we're able to create quite quickly. So let's take a run through some of the features. It won't be an exhaustive list because it's a huge product that does a lot, but it's worth taking a look at so that we understand it. I suppose a quick introduction is in order. My name's Frank of Learning and Technology with Frank. Been teaching for years, have a master's degree in learning and technology, but more importantly, this is my little cat, Blossom. This is my little black cat, Blossom, and then I also have a little gray cat named Peanut. So this is my little girl cat, Peanut's my little boy cat, and uh, together we like to share learning and technology tips, tricks, and all sorts of cool stuff. Okay, so if I go to the Ed Cafe website, and I can have my home, my library, recent work that I've done, and I can work with my account. So I've done a little bit of exploring already here, and I can create a number of different resources, from planning resources, teaching and learning materials I can create, and I can do assessments as well. So let's take a look at creating a lesson plan. It's quite easy to do. So I'm going to go in to create a lesson plan. I'll choose the topic that I'm interested in. So let's say I want to do a national parks. I'm going to do a series of lessons on the national parks. And I want to take a look at Wood Buffalo National Park here in Canada. So that's uh, up northern Alberta ways. And we'll go ahead and I can just put in instructions that's optional, different types of um, things. For example, if I have an audience that I want to gear it towards, or if I want to have a specific focus of the training that I'm doing, I can do that as well. And then what I can do is if I want, I can choose to search Google for different lesson resources that I might have. So that will allow me to uh, search wider than maybe the information I have. And then if we have standards, we can also put those in. So I can upload different standards. I can put in my own text in here as well. Um, I better make some corrections here in terms of the spelling. So we'll make sure that we put the right spelling and grammar in there. And then um, you can also provide it with resources. 
So for example, um, I want to go to the Wood Buffalo National Park here. I'll copy the URL. This is from Parks Canada. And then I will put that in as a website resource for generating the lesson plan here. But again, you can bring in your own files. You can bring in uh, resources that you have. Now, when we go in, if I don't put a file in, you don't have to put a file. Just go back to the topic and it will generate the lesson plan for you. And it creates a nice little lesson plan based upon the website that I put in there and the criteria. Again, the more you put in, the better result you'll get. But this is a pretty good result for Wood Buffalo National Park, including things like some articles, some YouTube videos, and some different resources that I can then use in order to start planning out the lesson on, on this national park. I can then go in and uh, save this so I can reuse the work that I do. So a little bit of time put into the seed information in here will create a nice little library that I can build up of different resources and lesson plans and everything that I create. But some of the fun things that I can do besides just the lesson plan is I could do things like create a chat bot. This is a lot of fun as well. So I can create a bot for the, the assignment so I can assign this. So I'll say that I want to uh, create a chat bot of a park ranger. So this is going to be a park ranger or a park warden, depending where you where you live, you use different terms for that. So I'm going to go in and put a park ranger in here. They're going to be a chat bot that ed us on the Wood Buffalo National Park in Canada. They're going to focus on specific topics that I'm interested in. So for example, they're going to answer questions about the different plants and the different animals that we might have in the park. And they're going to be friendly. So I can choose that they're friendly. Oh, all the rangers and wardens are friendly. And maybe I want them to, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe I want them to have a little bit of a focus on being safe in the park. Or maybe I would want conservation activities in the park. Again, I can choose whatever I'd like in terms of the focus here. And then what I can do is once I've put in the information of how I'd like this chatbot to behave, so in this case, friendly and knowledgeable chatbot, then what I'll do, I'll just put this in here, I'll go in and I'll generate the chat bot and I'll be able to allow students or any learner to go in and interact with this chat bot. So I'm going in to say that this chat bot wants us to be safe. We're going to generate that chat bot and now it'll give me the greeting message. It'll give me a summary of how this chat bot's going to behave. Looks good to me. Um, I can add knowledge articles in here so that my chat bot can be very knowledgeable. So I'll put in the website for the national park. I could put in guidebooks. I could put in whatever I'd like to to seed the knowledge of the chat bot. The more I put in, the more it'll be able to answer. I can choose the language and the voice of the chat bot so I can create some tonality and make sure that it matches what I'm looking for. And then when I save this, I'll save this as the Wood Buffalo Chatbot, the Park Ranger. So I'll put that in here. And then what I'll be able to do, I'll save this in my library and I'll be able to use it again and again, and I'll be able to assign it. So I'll put it in my library and we'll make sure, so it'll be a Park Ranger or a Warden, and we'll go in and now that I've generated this, I can actually assign this. So I've created the chatbot. I can assign the chatbot. I can view the chats that have occurred after they occur. And it'll actually give me a QR code that you can scan and I can assign it either by embedding it or by putting it in Microsoft Teams. Lots of different choices of what I can do. Either clicking the link or scanning the QR code will allow the participant, the learner, to go in and start interacting with the chatbot. So they'll put in their name. Uh, once they've got to the assignment or scanned the QR code and gone to the website. And then the chatbot will be there chatting with them. So they can start asking questions about the park. They can start interacting with the knowledge. And again, the more that I give the chatbot to begin with, the more knowledge the chatbot will have. This is a great way to have people interact with the information, interact with the knowledge, and get a response back that helps them build their knowledge in a very fun way that's very exciting. It's like they're talking to someone about the park. Now, obviously, the person talking about the park has a deep set of knowledge, and they're going to give it 
ton of knowledge about the park because they have so much knowledge, but that's great. And let's say, for example, I'm scared of polar bears. So it's going to tell me, don't worry about polar bears. That's going to be okay. They, they don't have this, uh, they don't are, they aren't in this habitat. And then I'm like, oh, well, if they're not scared about polar bears, maybe I'm scared about grizzly bears. So it's going to, we're going to find out uh, what the, what the chat bot knows about grizzly bears in the park here. And you can see again, this is a, a park that's outside of the range of grizzly bears. Um, I wouldn't say it's a bear free park, but there's no, there's not a lot of grizzly bears. There's not a lot of polar bears. No, no polar bears. So you can go, you can go in after the chat and view the chats that have occurred with this particular chat bot. So you can see how people are interacting, the types of questions that they're interested in having answered. That can also help you design better learning outcomes, better learning lessons in the in the future as well. And everything is saved in your library. So you can go back and you can review all the chats that you've had and you can create a lot of other things. You can do things like generate AI images. You can do things like even create a quiz based upon a YouTube video. This is a fun thing that you can do. So let's put in a YouTube video. So this is a view video by Veritasium. It's a complex video. And maybe I want my students to watch the video and then I want to quiz them to make sure that they've not only watched the video, but understood the concepts in the video. So I have different things I can set up, number of questions, types of questions. I can have additional instructions, whether they should view the video or answer it while they're viewing the video. I can set a student level which is optional. So I can make it, you know, grade uh, 10 to 11 high school. And then it will go through and actually review the video on YouTube and it will create a series of questions based upon the transcript of the video in order to test the knowledge of anybody that's watched the video. And this can provide me with a great way to incorporate social media and YouTube into my classroom so that I can get better learning and meet students where they are. They can use YouTube to learn. What do you think? Is Ed Cafe something that you think you'll take a look at for your own learning and teaching? And what features do you think you're most interested in using and trying out? And as always, let me know if you'd like me to go deeper into any aspect of this resource. I like to share resources here on the channel and together I'd like to build a community where we can look at focusing on using technology to teach and learn and improve our productivity. You can subscribe, share, and even become a member of the channel now if you like. I also have a newsletter um, that you can subscribe to, but and at some point I'll actually start sending stuff with tips and tricks. I don't really do a lot of the newsletter stuff, but I'm just trying to see how many people would be interested in it. So thanks for watching, and I'm looking forward to sharing more discoveries with you in future videos.